You're listening to Actors Endurance, a podcast that inspires actors to never give up on their passion and find ways to continue to grow within the entertainment industry. My name is Shanette Wilson, and I'm an actress, and my co-host is Marlon Hargrave, and he is a teaching artist. And together, we are Actors Endurance. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, Actors Endurance. Now, today, of course, you know, we got a special show. So if y'all have not checked out our previous episodes, please do that. We're on YouTube, Spotify, all over social media. Check out our previous episodes. But today we have a special guest, one of my friends, international clean comic, and he's also an actor. Actors Endurance. Welcome to the show, y'all. Keith Ellis. Hey, hey, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> what's going on, Keith? What is going on? We are so happy to have you on the show. We know you have been everywhere and now you finally have landed here. So, welcome to the show, Keith. Welcome to Actors Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good seeing you again. It's only been so many years, but yes, I'm glad we crossed paths. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. Definitely had to have you on the show. And you're, first, you're our first comedian on the show, right, Marlon? Yes, first comedian, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow, all right, I like that, I like that. Let me see, the, let me see if I can set the standard high or be low. What the other oh, no. That standard's already high. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after you, I mean, you're the standard for it, so, you know, we welcome that. Yeah. For sure. Let's see what I can share that's going to be uh, beneficial in in life in general. And just, hey, let's watch the show even more often because you guys dig deep. Okay. Any questions, yeah. you want, anything you want to ask, I'm good. I'm open. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, keep it, uh, we'll keep it light in this first round right here. Um, <laughs> been in the business for a while. And because this is Actors Endurance, the very first question we always ask anyone is, how did you endure or how are you enduring right now? How did I endure? Uh, during, before COVID kicked in, I was doing NCL cruise line. Everything was good. And uh, the next thing I know, I'm supposed to go to Barcelona, Spain for three weeks on a cruise line. And everybody's like, when COVID came out, they was like, they're going to cancel it. They're going to cancel it. I'm like, nah, they're not going to cancel it. It's Friday. I'm supposed to fly out Saturday. Mm-hmm. I got the email Friday, all ships canceled. I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And next day I know everything was just slowed down. But it, but I got to say, COVID was the best thing that ever happened in this world. Mm-hmm. People, so let me so I'll, I'll see you live on that. Because now when you see that, it made everybody stop and pay, make awareness of how green, I mean, how blue the sky is. The ocean re- re- recycled itself. Uh, we got to see George Floyd. I mean, George uh, Floyd, because everything had to stop, and more people had to recognize exactly what was happening. Also, so not to get heavy on black people, everybody had to stop and see how black people were treated, mm-hmm. and that was the weirdest thing. But it was just hey, and but other than that, as time goes on. I kept working because being, I mean, I don't know if it's because of clean comic or the connections I made, people were calling me for private shows at the house because uh, a lot of people were just not going to shows. So they wanted to do something at their homes or some type of event because mm-hmm. two and three months in, four months in, people were getting that that itch at the house. Like, I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. But I kept, I kept working. I, I mean, I was still doing like five or six shows a month, seven shows a month. But it just, they just kept me working. Wow. So the endurance on that, it was just, it's really in this business, it's who you know and the connections you make. Mm-hmm. So other comics, a long time ago, me and Jeanette had a little conversation, which she added to that actually was the jump start to a lot of things. And until this day, I still talk about that conversation to people, what we had when that when we talked that day. Do you oh, know Please pray share, uh, pray share, pray share, pray okay. share. Do you, do you remember the conversation you said? I'm not sure what the conversation was. Did it have uh, something to do with 
Here's oh, the conversation. <laughs> we were talking. We were conversation. I went out to LA and I had I had I had an issue. I'd already been in the business for a minute. And I'm talking, I was like, you know, uh, 2007, six, seven, the bubble bursted and a lot of people lost their jobs. Mm-hmm. And where were they ending up? At the bars and clubs. And what were they seeing? New people getting on stage, comics. Get, I mean, ooh, I can be that. I'm funnier than that person. Oh, I can do that. And so within a week, people had business cards. I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. No, you're not. You haven't put the time in. You can't. It's impossible. And now they're messing things up in my head. I'm thinking they're messing things up because now they're getting jobs. Like, hey, you're going to have a party. I can be a comic at your party. They don't even have time. So now down the road, what if somebody's sitting at the bar and I'm like, hey, you ever have a comedian at your party? Yeah. And they sucked. <laughs> so I had my little complaint. And Jeanette said, I said, you know, that's just wrong. They're going out there doing that. She says, well, are you sure you're not the problem? I was like, whoa, wait a minute. So I self-evaluated myself and I was like, she's got a point. I am the problem because no one's talking to them and sharing to help them do better. So when I left LA that day after talking with you, I went back to Phoenix and I went into comedy clubs and people were like, what you doing here? You know, you're here in this level. I'm like, nope. So I started saying, is there anything I can do to help you in this business? Let me know. If you go out of state somewhere and I got connections in Portland and Virginia Beach, whatever, let me know. I'll make a phone call. See if we get you on stage. And they started looking at me like, what? I said, if you're going to an event, get some of these comics that have been in the game for a minute and let them close out the show and you still get some knowledge from them and that'll make you look good. And that person might hire you again for another show. And then that opened up more opportunities because people started calling me. Other people started, you know, they passed my name forward. It's like, this brother's out helping people. It ain't about me. But if I can help you get to where you need to be, you can be the next Kevin Hart. It ain't about me. You got to where you need to be. I'm where I'm supposed to be. So I'm doing what I need to do. And that's from that day forward, when that little conversation, I was like, I ain't got nothing but appreciation for you. Are you oh, sure it's not you, Keith? I'm like, All right, it is. I wasn't stubborn thinking like, what you talking about? It ain't me. It's these fools out here, but it, it was me. Look at so, that. I don't remember that conversation, but I'm glad we had it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> had it. Yeah. Cause we had so many conversations and to give like context, uh, you came out there and we hit every, just about every comedy club in LA. Like we were yes. going, <laughs> yeah, I was just hanging out, you know, but uh, you know, he was working, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. 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 yeah but it, just that conversation alone, when somebody says, you know, in that conversation, how we were having it. And I was like, the way people are doing it. And you said, are you sure you're not the problem? And a lot of people won't self-evaluate themselves. Mm-hmm. But when you said that, I was like, what am I not doing that I should be doing? And I should be helping people, not pointing the finger at them. And that's what people do. Like at the job, you tell somebody at the job, you know, everybody's in the corner. It's like, why are you guys over here? Because because his breath stinks. Will anybody tell him? Nope. Yeah. We're going to tell him. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to sit over here and talk about it but you're not going to try to help the brother out. So mm-hmm. I've had the pleasure of going to tell people, you know, you, mm-hmm, you, know, you smell. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the whole thing. It's like in comedy, I'm going to help anyone and everyone I can. It's not because there's enough to go around. And some people think I'm not going to tell him about this gig because I need it. I want it. And they don't know if you tell somebody they might get it, but they might pull you along and, and other things are bigger that might come along. So people don't see that. So for me, being the way that I am, I've been I've been added on to so many things. I'm the guys on the cruise ship and they pull me along and say, hey, Keith, you want to do this event over here outside the cruise ship? I'm like, yeah. Hey, Keith, you want to go over here? And that's what got me out the country again. When people are like, you want to go do an AFE tour? I'm like, what? Yeah, we're going to go to Poland. You want to go? Yeah. You want to go to Kuwait? Sure. You want to go to Qatar? Sure. Djibouti? Yeah. So just just being nice and not being bitchy about things, it's just, dude, I, my doors, they just keep on, I am just keep getting blessed. So like November, I'm going to uh, Bulgaria. So we're going to spend 20 days out in Bulgaria doing shows. I was in Bulgaria when I was in the army once. Isn't that crazy? Nah, well, 
Almost oh, three different yeah, yeah. places. <laughs> this one and yeah. So, so, Bulgaria, that's where we go. <laughs> wow. So that's gonna be that's, yeah. So I mean, it's just, that's just my. It's just I just sit back and just look and just listen to things, man. It's just just talk to people, share with people. And, you know, because comics now in Phoenix, I mean, pretty sure they're like, some of them are like, you know, oh, Keith is here, you know, and it's like, it's a lot of respect in the game. Hey, man, can what do you think about my set? And just be honest, you know, you can do this. How about this or that? I'm not going to try to tell you not to do anything. Like some people are like, I, I I can't do clean, Keith. I'm not asking you to do clean. Yeah. Do what you do. Because I do what I do. It works for me. But you, I just say you at least five or 10 minutes of clean. If you're going to do TV, at least you have a set made up for that. If it's funny, clean. You can add a couple of f bombs here and there for yourself, but mm -hmm. they just totally just be destroying the f bomb. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so uh, for me, it's, it's just it's it's been uh, a learning experience, and in comedy, it's constantly learning. And I've been in the game almost twenty years, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, that's a great story, though. I love that. That's a great way to endure is just, you know, to give back and help people. But also, uh, you know, I don't even remember giving you that advice, but I give that myself that advice all the time. It's good to just self-evaluate, you know, to always look at yourself to see where you can do better instead of always pointing the finger. Oh, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's, when we got on that, that, uh, what's that, uh, that addiction, Earl, Earl Nightingale. And like, think of oh, yeah. rich, think of oh, yeah. <laughs> How many times I mean, I got a lot. I became no, I because after that I became an addict. You don't know every day it played, every night I played that. I mean, for months, nothing else. It was just like, okay. I mean, till this day, occasionally I'll still go back and listen. It, it you were just like, you like that? I'm like, Shh, I'm an addict. I'm addicted yeah. to it right now. Yeah, because I'm every little piece, every little piece. I, I keep getting little, you know, bits and pieces. I was like, this is, you know, man, that was powerful. So, yeah. that's so me to stay focused. Is that type of thinking, does that, um, like the Earl Nightingale and all of that, did, do you, did that help you as well? Did, did you have to incorporate that to indoor, or was it something that was just an added value? It was an added value, but it says, you know, if you focus on something, it's like if you, if you go focus on fault, you find fault. But if you focus on good, your energy is what you bring in. And how you approach something or a person with a smile or with that drab look is what you're going to get back. And one of the comics just told me the other day, uh, one of the guys that got me going out the country, he says, I took a month off, man, just to relax. And he says, you know, now I'm going to get back into it. And he says, I needed to take a month off because I already got to the point of starting to prejudge people before I even got to it. <laughs> so when you see somebody, you're just like, ah, oh, here come this asshole. And, it's like, and you don't even know what I mean. He's like, oh, he's a priest. He's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> so when you start prejudging, your mind just gets to the point like, oh, man, oh, here go. I know she's not going to work with me. Oh, he's going to act stupid. And then you're like, why did I? And that's what we do. We look at somebody and prejudge them before we even talk to them. So, you know, listening to Earl Nightingale, it was just one of those it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And it's like, dude, the little crumbs were just like, focus, you can do this, you can do this. Remember to do this daily, this, 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 this. I said I wanted to be an international comedian and I am, I've traveled, I've done things. I've done, I've had some good movies. I've had some uh, uh, commercials, things like that. I still want an international commercial. They pay well, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's just it's just all in how you approach it. And your energy, the energy that you put out, because people have this, you know, I want to get rich quick, but they don't want to put the work in. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought in this business, I am where I am supposed to be because the people that I've met have given me the jewels, the gems that's needed to make me respect this game so much more and not take it for granted and not think like, you know, oh, I'm all that. Oh, I got this going on. I could do this and that. I just sit back and be like, thank you. I go to a, my shows. I'm always nervous on a high note. I'm very nervous until I get on stage. It still, it goes away. But before I go on stage, it's just like, let me go do some, I, I, I do my push-ups. Yeah. Push <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 
Yeah, that's great. Now, Keith, I wanted to ask you, because that's something I don't we know each other pretty well, but I don't know, like, why did you decide to do clean comedy? Oh, uh, being raised by mom and dad. My mother is 93 years old. Yeah. She has never said that I've heard one curse word in her life. Wow. Uh, this five, four foot nine woman just very religious, very, you know, by the book and everything. She was like, you know, you're doing comedy. I don't want to hear you out there doing all that cursing. You ain't got to do that. If I, if you on TV and you cursing, I would turn the TV off so fast you'll feel it. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she, she just, and that, that, so she's never heard me do any, pro, anything with, Profanity. There should be like no videos out there of me cussing up a storm. Mm -hmm. I started off clean and then I went blue and then I went back to clean because now everybody's got a video camera. And let me go out there, let me go out there and be like, mother, 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 mother. and somebody tape it and they'd be like, I thought it was clean. You know, and they, they would attack that in a minute. But as I said, I can do corporate shows without a problem, I can do churches without a problem. And the subject matter is not always about, oh, it's Christian. No, I talk about black, white. Uh, I talk about, it's still across the board. It's just how it's presented. So I, I just look at things like, okay, I can still do what I need to do. But if you hire, like if I go to a corporate show, you could make anywhere from three to $5,000. In the contract that I write, if there's any profanity, like if I drop an F-bomb or something like that, it voids my contract. So I don't get paid. So if I have another comic with me and I say, I need you to do 15 minutes, I'm gonna knock out 45. And he goes up and says, F, pop this. I'm like, that voids my contract. Now okay. I gotta kill it. I gotta kill him. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. I can void my contract. Don't let the opener void my contract. Right. If I void it, I still have to pay him. So yeah. it's just, I just figured, I'm like, I can keep it clean. I can, Cause I was, I was doing some shows in Virginia beach at a high comedy club. And I was dropping the F-bomb and F this and screw this and that and shit and blah, blah, blah. And then I went home one night and I was doing three shows a night, seven days a week for months. I went back the next day. I was like, I'm not going to do profanity anymore. I went on stage, no cussing, came off stage and a comic came up and he says, you know what? You're still funny. and You didn't even cuss. I'm like, I know. I don't need to. Yeah. I don't need a crutch. And as Till this day, it still works. It still gets me, it gets me into a lot of places. Oh yeah. I've, I've done private, private shows for six white women in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> I know you were. Because <laughs> so I was like, after the show, they're like, do you do private shows? I'm like, yeah. We want you to do a birthday party. I'm like, where you're at? Where you at? In Prescott. Okay. It's a cabin. Oh, okay. How much do you charge? Do the fee out there? They they set it all up nicely. We had almost three hours of just nothing but fun. Uh, and and no, there was no profanity or nothing. It was like, thank you so much. Oh man, we enjoyed the heck out of you. I'm like, okay, all right. So other comics, I tell other comics you should do that. And they're like, I just can't do clean. I just can't do. I mean, that's that's fine. That's you. That's you. For me, it that clean got me over in Germany. Somebody saw me on Facebook. And they said, uh, you do clean? I'm like, yes. Have you ever been to Germany? No. Would you like to go? I'm like, well, financially, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. We talked. We talked. We talked. About a year went by. I went to Germany for 31 days. They gave me a flat. I stayed wow. in. I did Bavaria. I did Czech Republic. I did uh, the military bases. And then the, a lady wanted to hire me at her. She has a rope park and a ski lodge. She wants to hire me to teach kids how to ski. I was like, this is going to be, because I do ski. So oh, okay. it's like, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> they're like a black guy with these little kids behind a white, white Czech Republic kids behind a ski. And yeah, come on. <laughs> so, so, I mean, clean has gotten me in a lot of wonderful places and it has passed on. And, you know, your, your attitude also helps. So they're just like, this, this is a nice dude to work with. He never complains. He just, 
So no one has to tell me what I can't say on stage. It's like, uh, guys, um, we just got a group of people came in. So um, no sexual innuendos and, and no profanity. And I'm like, okay, cool. Everybody else like, man, I got to redo my set list. Yeah. I don't. So wow. even in bars, even in bars, it's like, what are you going to do in this bar? I'm like, my same set. They're like, you're not going to cuss? No. They don't like it. That's not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turns out, who turns out sometimes to be the most funny? I'm like, okay. And they're just like, dude, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. So. Well, I think that's a great thing. Yeah, because, well, all you comics out there, you know, take note. You know, I mean, you know, if you have a, if you have clean material, like you said, you can go anywhere. You can do anything, you know, and you don't have to make the adjustments for, you know, because you have a family show or, you know, because... <laughs> I've seen you. I've seen you kill it at the ha ha at the comedy store, and <laughs> I mean every you know standing ovations around. It was just funny. Like I find, I think you're definitely funny, but you know that's just. You know. But, and see, and the thing about being if you if you're both ways, uh, and like I said, I just choose to be my way. That way, I don't have to ch check myself and watch out because I've seen other comics. They're both ways. So now mm -hmm. they got people that come to a show. And they were hoping that they were going to do that one act that had this in it and that in it. And they was like, no, this is a clean show. Oh, man, that other stuff that you do, so and so and so and so. I'm like, I don't have to, I don't have to be two different people. Mm -hmm. I just have to do what I do. And now they're like, you know, or they'll slip up. It's like, oh, I'm not, ooh, I'm not at that show. So I don't have to really think about much other than just go do what I do. And mm -hmm. I don't have to, you know, you've seen me do shows where, well, I've seen people get mad and they cut my time. It's like, I want this motherfucker being funny. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing about the, com the the comic business is brutal. Like, I thought actors had it rough. Just seeing you going through the, you know, different things you went through, like, you know, performing to different places. Oh, you guys have it rough. It's a cold-blooded business. <laughs> it, it It is. It is. It's, like you, if I go to LA, I mean, they they they'll they'll laugh, whatever. But if let's just say I go to an open mic or something, they don't want to give you credit if you're funny. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that they always the funny. Like, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And you're like, wow, dude. I, I San San Diego, they did. It's like, wow. I, and now that I've gotten older, I just say things. Hmm. I'll say things like, you know, if you might learn something if you hang around, don't just come to your set and walk out the room. If you stay in the room, you might learn something. You might meet somebody, but you got that mentality like you think you're the bomb mm -hmm. and you think you're the funny one. And I've sit in the back because I'm really, I'm kind of low key. And you watch people go on stage and do their thing and they're cussing or they're doing their sexual things. And then I go on stage, you know, just let me just do my set. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, you're just a little quiet dude back here. And you just go out and act a fool on stage. I'm like, yeah, that's where. I'm not, I'm not here to brag. I'm not here to say, you know, oh, yeah, how you doing? What's that? What's that? Yeah, we're going to knock this out. I yeah. pray people laugh. He Lord. <laughs> he let them laugh. That's my world. It's like, I just want you to laugh, not be offended. And I walk off the stage, go to my own little hiding place, have my scotch and a cigar. <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just chill. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just thank the people. Appreciate them. Last night. Last show, I had a dude, he was sitting in front of me and I was going off and he was he was laughing, but in a sense, he was saying this, you're not funny, that's not funny anymore. Okay, you can stop, you're not funny. His wife, tears coming out of her eyes, his friend, and he's just like, stop, you're not funny anymore. But he's laughing at the same time and I'm laying on the floor already. And I'm just like, I wanna say something back, but I'm like, I can't break this act right now. I just, <laughs> I got to play this. <laughs> I'm like, because it's about me falling down. If anybody's seen that act, it takes a minute to play out. And I'm just laying there. And I've never, a man walked up to me, he says, I've never cried so much at a comedy show, dude. I was like, a man's telling me this. Like, that's good. He says, okay. You, as a clean comedian, like, I, I lived in Virginia Beach and I actually trained some of those comedians in the area, or at least I worked with them. And they had to do clean comedy there because they really couldn't get any cursing jobs. It, it was it was kind of wild, but they really got heckled though. Yeah, I mean, unless, you said they really got heckled. Yeah, unless they just bombed, unless they were just bad. But it, it's kind of 
you feel like a jerk if you over here heckling a clean comedian, like at least go after it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, he's trying, honey. He's trying. Don't hurt him. He's he's he ain't said no performances yet. You know, he can't take the abuse that we're about to give him. So <laughs> Because as a clean comic, I don't know if people think you're soft or what. And 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 I'm gonna be real. I black people, white people, black people go to a show, you can better be funny. That's right. White people let's go to a comedy show. So you gotta change different speeds when you do different crowds. You got the chitlin circuit, the ones that think that they it's like that's a phantom. No, it's not. That's just a grill of a of a Dodge 300. That's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a phantom, dude. That is not a phantom. And then you got the other people that actually work for, <laughs> for 35 on up and they have a nine to five and they come to laugh. The other $5 ones that think they want a $35 show is like, this better be funny. And I've learned because I've done a show. You could hear, I did a show once. You could, you could hear this. You could hear. Oh, wow. And that's across the room. Oh, and wow. then, yeah, this is like, I brought the other comedian out. I was the host. Another comedian came out and he was like, this fat girl, this F this girl, she's sucking my, and they're like, ha, ah. they're rolling. I come back out. <laughs> <laughs> I bring the next comedian out. <sighs> next years later, they asked me to do a show again. I'm like, yeah, I'll do that show. I went and a guy said something to one of the comedians on stage and the whole audience was like, ooh. Ooh, and I was like, what happened? He's like, he just said something about that dude right there. And I guess the audience know him or something. And like, ooh. So somebody said, so what you gonna do when you go up? I'm like, if he can say something, he should be able to take something. So I go up and he said something to me and I said something back to him. I was like, didn't you say something about you almost died and your brother saved your life? He's like, yeah. I says, how we know your brother wasn't trying to kill you and somebody was coming and he stopped. And he was like, oh, shit. <laughs> And you hear way in the back of the room, I wonder how long he going to be up. And I said, I'm going to be up another 27 minutes. You got a problem with that? He's like, no. I said, anybody got a problem with that? They're like, no. I said, all right then. And I did 27 of my best minutes. They didn't have to laugh. It just lets me know, I'm going to check y'all. I'm not going to be intimidated by y'all anymore. I'm done with that. Did my set. Dude, brother came over to me and said, man, I would have roasted you. You ain't funny. I was like, okay, here's my business card. I run two spots in Arizona. Bring all the people you want. <laughs> I'll sit next to you and you can destroy me on stage. But if you just talk it, shut the F up, get the F up my face. The other comic's like, Keith, I'm like, all these niggas. He's like, <laughs> I was like, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not, no, I'm not backing out from none of these fools because that's, you know, it's like the Apollo. Yeah. Some people, if you can't sing, they're going to boo you. But isn't it funny, years later, when you sing in the buying your albums? Mm. So why you, why, I mean, we're all trying something and we believe in something. And even I know there's a, a Lauren Hill back in the day, didn't sound good when she was doing her thing. But now look at Lauren Hill, bam. Because I saw a video of that and it was like, okay, and they were booing her, boo. And the sad part, I, I equate that to being like Whitney Houston. She was trying to do her comeback. And her voice cracked a few times. People booed her and wanted their money back. Isn't that the time that a person needs you the most when you're trying to come back? You support them. But we tend to just destroy people. And that's where I'm not on that page. I'm on the page of, I'm going to come at you. And I've been bullied as a kid, but I'm not going to let other people bully people if I have an opportunity to step in. Yeah. That's, just, it's just, that's just my mindset right now. So mm -hmm. this is not, it's not an easy game. So when you find people that actually wanting to do something and do the best they can, and you on all you do is just sit there and you go to your little nine to five, and but you come to a comedy show, act like you the judge, the jury. I'm like, man, I will try to destroy you. <laughs> so I was very <laughs> close. Yeah, we, we have to have you back on. We haven't even tapped into you yet. We're almost at the end of our half an hour, man. Wow. Wow. I got, I, um, I got one yes. more question too. One more question. Uh mostly because you're a comedian, right? I have to know because you know, comedians, uh, it just from my experience, I always hear, you know, you have to be a certain way to be a comedian. You know, like you gotta be, they always say you guys are a little off. 
right? Um, yeah, well, that's what I hear. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> no, but anyway, but how do you maintain your physical as well as your mental health? That's what I want to know. But let's see. At the age of thirteen, I remember standing outside in, in my at my house back in the day, and there's a dude that walked by. And uh, I'd never seen him before. He had a T-shirt on, and I mean, he was he was he was swole. And he said, look, man, always stay stay in stay in shape. And I think he just got out of prison. I think, <laughs> but I was like, so that stayed in my head. So I always stayed active. So as life went by, older people would come in the grocery store, touch the touch the ground. Seventy eight years old, look at this, and they just stayed active. Another lady in her seventies would stand upside down on her head in her house every day. So my, my my thing was like when COVID kicked in, I didn't I didn't do gyms. If you looked at any of my stuff after, during COVID, you see me outside on the on on monkey bars at a kid's playground because no kids. I'm doing always exercise. That's why I still do push-ups before the gym. I mean before a show, I do pull-ups, I do so my mindset is like always keep moving because once you slow down, they'll start throwing dirt on you. And if you look at how people are, our age, my age, I'm 60 now. Wow. Look at the people back in the days when they were 60, they were just like moving around slow. But our mindset, we looked at them, now we started acting like them. And I'm like, no, that's not how it works. So if you you think young, you act young, like my mom's 98, she's still driving. She's still shopping. She's still doing everything. Keeps your mind active and strong and she's still funny she's still she be cracking jokes not knowing she cracking jokes and <laughs> that you gotta you gotta you can't take life serious and even because if you take life too serious that's where things start your mind if if you don't and another thing the strong thing is have faith in an up a higher power because that right there if you don't have faith you wonder how people get sick and you know where they want cancer leukemia diabetes whatever and it's like if you change your way of thinking, you can also heal your body. And that's that's a fact. If you focus on things, you get what you focus on. But if you like, okay, I need to start thinking healthier. My friend, uh, we were having a bet who could lose, who could get a six pack first. And she was like 140 something pounds. And she's like, okay, we're working on it. She started losing a little bit. Okay, then she started losing a little bit more. And I was like, okay, you're cheating. A little bit more. She had cancer. She didn't know it. She has, she has stage four cancer. She didn't know. She was 98 pounds. She was 98 pounds. Didn't even know she had cancer. You call me up, Keith. I got stage four cancer. But what did we, you know, you go over to somebody's house. You say, hey, how, how you doing? You okay? I walk over to the house like, oh, you do anything to get attention, don't you? I don't know why. <laughs> <It's> so crazy. <laughs> I'm like, you just, you just be trying anything, don't you? Just, but now she's back at 138 pounds four years later and she had stage four she and her mindset she hikes five out five miles a day she'll just walk and she'll do the mountains your mind don't let things you know feel sorry for yourself don't you know, you know my arm hurts you know i can't i can't move no you know in the neighborhood where we come from we get shot <laughs> i'm gonna shake that off and still go play <laughs> basketball tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> i just have to use my left hand now that's all but I'm gonna let you take my game away <laughs> that's how we do it so we like you said if we're, we're black folks we know endurance we know struggles I mean, we don't let things take us down so i'm like you got to have a strong faith and not let things take your mind because people will you know people get upset and they say things like yeah you know i just can't do anything no you can't because you choose not to but if you want to you can Yes. Okay. I love that. I love that. And you're right. You know, as black folks, we are the most resilient people on this planet because yeah. we can't nothing keep us down, you know, <laughs> nothing. That, I mean, the truth is just like, we're going to figure a way out. Oh, we're going to figure cool. something out how to make this thing happen. And, and yeah. not, not, if we stop being shallow and judging other people and being picky, it's like, if you focus on you and not focus on your neighbor and your friends or what they said and what she said, you will get so much further. Let the stuff fall off because I have this thing. This is one of my jokes. It's like, you know, I don't care if you wear a mask or don't wear a mask when COVID. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. You're going to die anyway. <laughs> You're going <laughs> to die anyway. No one's ever walked up to me and says, can I help you with rent? But here I am wearing a mask 
And now you want to walk up to me, why are you wearing a mask? It don't make no sense wearing a mask. You ain't going to stop no COVID. I'm like, well, I ain't wearing a mask for that. I'm wearing a mask because I'm about to rob your ass. That's why I'm wearing the mask. <laughs> this is all in how you look at it. Don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> so, but we, I mean, it's like waking up in the morning. I go outside, good morning. And I said it last night. I says, here we are, Americans. Good morning. Okay, you don't speak back. And now you're like, well, F you did. And I was like, why do you even have to say anything to follow it up? Now I got to go to my car and get my gun, come back and shoot you. Because <laughs> like, we, we pick our own battles. Good morning. I don't know what you're going through, but you didn't speak back, so I got to have an attitude. Yeah. And I was like, see, that's why some of us don't see the next day. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. And keep uh, before we uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, this is, I'll leave you quick because I this is where I make people really kind of nervous. Because when you get that, you get to a certain age, I say, it's like, yeah, people are like, oh, wow, you know that age? Like, yeah, you know, my brother gives me a call. He's like, hey, man, did you hear about so and so? Yeah, he died. You're like, wow. So, me, you know, thinking about, you know, classmates, or whatever, it's like, wow, how did he die? Was it leukemia? Was it cancer? Was it diabetes? What was it? He's like, he got shot. I'm like, oh, cool, natural causes. Oh, damn. <laughs> White people are like, what? Natural causes? That's, that's in our neighborhood. That is natural causes. It's like, it's like we die. Oh, that's horrible, but it's funny. <laughs> that it's just to make people think. It just, yeah. that's, like I said, I like for you to think. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> logic. Now, when folks get into this martini round, where can people come and see you and uh, have some laughs? <laughs> Uh, my, you hit me on my website at Keith Ellis Comedy, or you hit me on Instagram, still Keith Ellis Comedy, and follow me, ask me questions. Uh, if you're a comedian, hit me up. If you come to Arizona, if I can direct you in some areas with some other shows, that's what it's all about. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And I tell you, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show. <laughs> both of you guys. Yes, you too. Both yeah. of you. <laughs> For sure. Now we're gonna get into this uh this uh martini round. Um I'm just gonna ask you five simple questions, you know, it could be one word, two word answers, you know, whatever you okay. want to say. Um okay. You ready? All right. Yeah, yeah, give me, give me calm down. I remember like, oh Lord. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's gonna come out? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> five, four, three, two, let's drink. Okay, so Keith, tell me, what is your favorite smell? Flowers. Your favorite vacation spot? Oh, man, uh, Bermuda. Okay. Uh, cats or dogs? Dogs. I want no witness. Cat nothing but a witness. <laughs> okay. And what is your, what is your go-to shoe? Like your favorite shoe to wear? Fila. Fila, okay. And what is your time, your favorite time of year? I, autumn. I got to say autumn right now, looking at the colors. Wow. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, me and Marlon kind of laughing on the inside because I think you're the third or fourth, the fourth guest or the fourth or fifth guest to say uh, autumn. Everyone, actually, everyone has said that. All of yeah. our guests have chosen, yeah, the favorite time of year is, yeah, autumn, fall. This of all your guests in black. Okay, yeah. Um, that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> no, because I'm like, that's why like, we like color. We like color. <laughs> uh, that's oh, interesting. I didn't think about that. But uh, yeah, like you said, you get Beautiful colors. We like beautiful colors. That's, that's just, I mean, it's just like, that's why we like, we. it's a mix. We like things. We don't like bland white. We don't like bland black. It's just beautiful just to see i mean there's a the thing i say when i go on stage i'm like hey okay i know you guys look at me you're thinking is he is he haitian is he african is he is he hispanic is he puerto rican i'm like let me let you know i'm from a mixed i mean i'm from a mixed marriage uh my mom's a, a woman and my dad's a man <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah it's a baby you, you have to think you have to think <laughs> Think that I love that. I absolutely it's, love that. It's, it's people don't see where it's coming from. So then and the other thing, the main thing is my whole world is educate the audience. I've had the pleasure of sitting down with some, you know, famous comics and listening to them. And the first thing, 
they say, learn all you can because the audience think comedians aren't smart. But if you can educate them and they stop, that's the thing. So I try to make sure I educate any audience. And most of my audiences seem to be 85% white. So I bring them up to speed on black, black history, events, uh, whatever. And it's just, and they were like, it's one o'clock. Who made, who made ranch dressing? It was a black guy in Dallas. And people were like, what? What did he buy in California? Hidden Valley. What did he do? <laughs> he sold it to Clorox. But it's a black man who was a plumber and he got, he made Hidden Valley um, ranch dressing. He's the one that made it. People are like, I, I didn't know that. So there's a lot of things that white people don't know that they like is made by black people. Yeah, <laughs> that is so true. Wow, that, I, that is, and you, you didn't even grab the mic. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this why black people are, uh, it, uh, is this why black people love ranch so much and just don't know why because black people don't like I, blue cheese love ranch though <laughs> I don't I don't think they, like you said, a lot of people don't know there's so many things and if you start just reading a little bit here and there I kind of pick things up and it's like, like oh okay and then you say things I mean there's there's some jokes that some people like they had to get on stage one day everybody tell a joke and it's like, just something new, make up something. And I sit there and I'm like, hmm, okay, I got one. And, like, and I just made it up. And it's like, what is the Black Panther's favorite cookie? And I'm like, what? I'm like, the Black Panther's favorite cookie. And I don't know, I was like, it's the Oreo. Cause that's the only time you see two Blacks putting pressure on a white. <laughs> wow, dope. <laughs> wow. You see people like people like they don't know how to take you, Keith. I'm like, I right, I just think and just, just say it and then just hear the oh, okay. Oh my god. I won't be on your show anymore, will I? It's like we're gonna have to ban Keith. Oh no, you coming back. <laughs> that was wow. crazy. That was pretty creative oh, there. Goodness. <laughs> you have and been you stand out different. You just stand out different. You do your own, you do you, and they'll be like, oh, I never thought about that. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Because my mom did it first. She said, I went to I went to the Bellagio, I did a I did a show. And I says that I learned how to dress differently. So, but this came from my mom. I wear a black suit, black tie, white shirt. I did a show. And I told, you know, mom, you know, yeah. And the guy pulls up in a nice SUV and he throws me the keys. You know, like I'm a valet. And my mom said, Well, it's not theft if it's given to you. <laughs> Good point. Good point. not my fault he thought yeah. <laughs> so hmm. i still have yeah. this truck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right i'm gonna say more money more money that was one of this games they doing their little vest and hey, hey they just give you the keys huh it's <laughs> all in it's like i said it's all in how you perceive things man people if you don't, if you don't show them outside the box, you know, they'll never understand. Like, I never looked at it that way. Like I said, and it all started because somebody said, "Are you sure you're not the problem?" Yeah. Like, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're Thank very, you. very welcome. <laughs> very welcome. Oh my goodness! Listen, you have been a a pleasure to have on the show. You got us both cracking up, <laughs> which I assume would happen anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, can't wait you definitely have to come to atlanta uh let me know when you come you know you can tear up all these comedy clubs out here and um you know good luck on everything else that you're doing i'm sure you you know you stay busy anyway ever since i met you you stay busy like one of the kings of networking i learned a lot from you as far as you know just reaching out to people and so yeah you've been a, a how did we meet how did we meet we met did we meet at a show we met that at the, the Charlie Chaplin's house. You were there and they had me do comedy at an event that was so hectic, I didn't think anybody could hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, we, we talked, connected, and that's where everything, I was just thinking, there's nothing going to come out of this. I slept in my car that night. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that's the show. LA for you. Yeah, that's yeah. LA for you. I remember, I remember that show. Yeah, because you were funny. That's why I came up to talking to you. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you never know, man. Just, just. Yeah. It's, it's like I said. It's all about networking. So we've been friends ever since. So thank you again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. 
<laughs> I always keep my good friends around. Always keep my good friends around. You know? Ditto. Ditto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we definitely so, have to have you back on the show um, at some point. I know you have some touring to do, um, but we'll we'll definitely reach out and um, yeah, we'll have you back. Have to have you back at some point. Well, twenty twenty four, I will be coming to Atlanta. I'll make it's a note, it's a promise. Twenty twenty four, I'll come out see you guys. We go sit down and eat. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Teach me about Atlanta, because Atlanta is totally different, especially the airport. Man, you'll get some good material out here. I will tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm in Austin, so whenever you hit Austin, let me know. Austin, yeah. Texas? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, yeah, because I, I do McAllen and some other areas out there in Dallas and so forth. But yeah, okay, I'll keep you posted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next one, Instagram, so we all can uh, just, you know, keep up with what each other's doing. That, I like that. Yeah, for sure, yep. So you got Austin and Atlanta. You got to visit both, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'm coming to Atlanta, <laughs> I haven't seen you in. I haven't seen you since. Man, that's I'm like, damn. Ten years, not longer. It it's might. been a while. It's been, been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. I'm like the way your guns are right now. Like, Look at you. You loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and proud of you. Proud of you. I've seen. I've, I've seen the things you've been working on. I am very proud of you because you stayed focused. And I'm like, oh, she moved. Or she, you stayed, and you're still in the game. So that's the only. It's like just never give up. You just never know. Cause it ain't over yet. So yeah. continue growth and continued blessings on both, both sides for you guys. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah, All right, guys, so. Yeah, it's been a pleasure again. And um, yo, follow this man, like, follow, subscribe, Keith Ellis comedy on, uh, well, that's his, uh, his Instagram. Yeah. And yeah, yeah Keith Ellis. you'll find me. You'll find me somehow. Yeah. They'll find me. <laughs> for sure well thanks for being on the show and uh y'all that's another wonderful episode of actors endurance and we are out of here that's love that's love